So today, what we're going to do is, what if Glaber Torres never left the Cubs? Last night in the ALCS Game 1, he had himself just a game to remember. Five RBIs, and he, he looks like he's the real deal at second base. If he was still part of the Cubs, he would have filled a glaring hole that the Cubs have. Second base is a massive issue currently. Obviously, Addison Russell's kind of a scumbag. Zobrist was out for most of the year second base is a big issue so would glaber torres have been the same thing if he stayed with the cubs probably not he would have had to fight with addison russell and a couple other players at second base also would the cubs have won that world series probably not because a role chapman was a key part of that bullpen especially having that strong lefty that ended up winning us you know a world series so it's it's toss up win a world series keep a player I'm taking the World Series. I'm happy that the Cubs made the trade. Yes, it sucks now because we do need a second baseman, but things happen. So if you guys enjoy these, you want to see some more what ifs, let me know in the comment section down below which ones you'd like to see. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. Make sure you hit the bell notification icon so you're notified whenever a video does go live. Also, eh, all social media are in the description down below. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff. Go and give them a follow. And other than that, guys, let's hop into this. I think... The Cubs are going to be pretty nasty with Gleyber Torres at second. So when you look at the Cubs this season, obviously the glaring issue was the pitching rotation. Starting pitching had its streaks. It looked really consistent for most of the year, but then come the end of the year, John Lester, Cole Hamels, they just looked like they were too tired. They looked like their age was starting to show a little bit, and they started to hit to a point where every single pitch, they, they would just look like they were throwing BP. So starting rotation still looks the same. I think the bullpen, again, was another huge issue for the Cubs. But who knows how it would have been different if they, you know, didn't have to spend money on Daniel Descalso or other players at second base or third base. Maybe they would have, you know, looked to improve that, that bullpen a little bit. Brandon Morrow being hurt definitely hurts as well. They went to sign Craig Kimbrell. You know, there's a lot of, lot of variables with the pitching. But when we take a look at the lineup, I think this this really would have helped out the cubs a lot glaber torres coming in to play second base means addison russell wouldn't have gotten a second chance he would have been kicked out of the team and we would have been looking like this nicholas castellanos i still think would have been an addition to the team you know obviously they brought in tony kemp um jonathan lucroy once Contreras got hurt but there still would have been some money to work with glaber torres is still a young player 22 you know he's He's got team control for the next five years. I mean, there's no reason why the Cubs wouldn't have been able to keep him around. Money wouldn't have, you know, there wouldn't be this question mark of do we re-sign Ben Zobras at the end of the year? Do we look at other second base options? There still would have been a way to keep all these players together. Torres, Bryant, uh, Baez, Rizzo, Contreras. You still have that core. And I think there still would have been some flexibility to trade some players as well. Maybe a Schwarber, a Hap things like that so this is the team i think the cubs would run with if you know torres was part of the team i mean second base probably wouldn't be the leadoff guy i think we definitely have to find a leadoff guy which is a little difficult to come up with but um i still think the team would be scary good you know what? let's let's give schwarber a run out at that uh that leadoff spot and we'll kind of run like that so this is going to be the cubs team I, I think it's a, it's a really solid team, especially when you add a second baseman who can just crush the ball defensively. He's getting better, still not the best of defensive second baseman, but it's still a really solid shot. So we're gonna sim at least one season, see how things go. Does the addition of Glaber Torres really help out? So obviously the Cubs are gonna be a lot better with a hole in the lineup that isn't just a guaranteed out. When you take a look at some of the players that the Cubs had at second base, yes, they had Bodie fill in from time to time. For most of the season, he was hitting around 250, 260. You look at Daniel Descalso, who they were paying like three, four million, possibly five million. He was hitting under 200 for a majority of the year. I don't even think he really got his average above 200 after like the first month of the season. So for 90% of the season, you had a guy who was hitting under 200 in your lineup. Ian Happ obviously had his struggles where he was in AAA for most of the season. And then when you look at like the late additions of Tony Kemp and things like that, second base was just a big issue for the Cubs. And yes, the bullpen was a huge issue as well, but let's take a look and see how the season went. Standings wise, we finished 103 and 59. We're ranked fourth in the league, third in contact, third in power, and fourth in defense, 23 in speed, and 11th in pitching. So the big thing is, how does Glaber Torres help out the squad? So let's take a look, see if we had any awards for Glaber Torres. No, it looks like Chris Bryant had a good year, but let's take a look because Ben Zobrist obviously is aging. He's not 
as good as he used to be. He's still a very good contact hitter. He's still a very good player, but you know, obviously he turns 38 in the spring. He's he's getting he's getting a little bit older. He's not going to be able to play as much. He's going to need to rest. So when you have a player you can rely on, a young and up come and up a young and up and well oh my gosh, a young and up and coming second baseman like Labor Torres who can start to take over that second base spot, who would probably really be your everyday second baseman. And you can play Zobrist as that platoon player who can really play all over the field. It takes a lot of weight off that second base spot. When a player can hit you 25 plus home runs every single year, add close to 100 RBIs, hit for a good average, hit for extra base hits. Gleyber Torres is not the fastest of players. I know that he may not be the best of defensive players either, but he's definitely adds some pop to the lineup that already has a lot of pop. You look at Chris Bryant, Javi Baez, Rizzo, Contreras, the new addition of Nicholas Castellanos. You have a team, even Kyle Schwarber, who's hitting 30 plus home runs a season or mid to mid 20s and above. You're looking at a team with a lot of power, a lot of offensive ability, and Gleyber Torres only makes that lineup a lot more deadly. So yes, I think Gleyber Torres makes this team better. You guys can see the new additions of it. Uh, Russell, I don't even know why he's part of the lineup. I put him in AAA. But um, we'll take a look and see how the bullpen went. Obviously, the bullpen was an issue for the Cubs as well. But you can see through the sim, things went pretty well. Pretty well. Kyle Hendricks had himself a pretty bad year. Yikes. So did Quintana. But for the most part, everything looks good. So let's take a look. See how things go in the postseason. Taking on the Pirates. Really? And we move on. So let's get our best foot forward and just go like this and uh, just keep going let's see how things go game one we lose game two we win okay three we win four we lose five oh man we're one game away from winning and it comes down to game seven of the nlcs who how is this gonna finish that's the big question home at wrigley field hmm do we go lefty? They do kind of have a lefty heavy bull or lineup. John Lester struggling in the postseason. They got Julio Urias on the mound, which actually helps us out because we got a righty heavy lineup. So, oh man, I think we got to go Quintana and hope everything goes well. So let's hop in with this lineup here and let's see how things go. Justin Turner leading it off. Okay. Mm, don't like Jed Jerko getting on. Gleyber Torres is our first runner of the game and a double play ends the inning. Okay. So, so far, pretty quiet game. Quintana's our only hit. That says a lot. First and second, no outs. Base is loaded for Baez. Two runs come home. Okay, I'll take that for sure. And then it's a three to nothing, four to nothing, and a triple for Rizzo. Okay. Pollock goes deep and it's a four to one game. But so far, it's looking pretty solid. As I say that, it's a four to two game now. And uh, Quintana's doing well. Let's see how we can continue this go forward. 4-2 still. Quintana's probably done here. Unless he can get this out. He does not. Hmm. Let's go to let's go to Strope. And he gets us the out perfect. Alright. Contreras. There we go. It gets us one of those runs back, and we're up to a three-run game. Alrighty. I want Strope to go one more inning. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Perfect. Mostly because I just don't trust the rest of the bullpen. So that's why I did it. And I meant to take out Strope. We'll go to... Can I trust Kimbrel here? Can I trust Kimbrel here? I can. Woo! We're going to the World Series. There we go. And we're taking on the Astros. Quintana just pitched. So we got to move him down. Hendricks should be good. And then we'll go... Yikes. Um, go like that, I guess. I don't know. This one's going to be tough. The Astros are definitely a tough team. We win the first game, though, and the second and the third. Are we really going to do a queen, a queen, a clean sweep of the Astros home again at Wrigley Field? And um, Let's go, let's go Hamels, just in case, you know, then we can just go to um, Hendricks if we need to. So that's a good first inning. I'll take that for sure. And a single by Rizzo and then an out. So, okay, so far, so good. 
Glaber Torres got on, but hopefully we can get the bats going. That's what we really need. There we go. Baez with the two run triple. That's how we get the game started. So we're up two still. Cole Hamels is doing quite well. As I say that I just got to stop praising the pitchers because every time I go to praise the pitcher, a run is scored. So Rizzo gets on a double play and then Castellanos is out. If Cole can give us just one more inning, I'm cool with that. Yes, perfect. So seven innings from Cole Hamels. It's a two to one ball game and we're going to pinch hit here. We're going to go to let's go Zobrist and he flies out. Unfortunate. So facing a lefty, let's go to Ryan and then we'll we'll go to a couple of righties. Now let's go Phelps a double really and he gets us out of it. Probably could have kept the lefties in, but you know what? I'm, I'm cool with that. So Hayward. Hayward, lefty, lefty, crime, puts us up by two. And uh, ninth inning, we're going to go to Kimbrel. Hopefully, he can shut out the game. <sighs> and that is it. The Cubs win the World Series, defeating the Astros. A sweep of the Astros as well. And we'll take a look at the awards. I'm doubting Glaber Torres had anything positive during this postseason this is where i think he went a little cold 232 is not terrible four home runs I, the average is bad yeah but the home runs and rbis i'm actually pretty happy with but um zobris had himself quite quite a postseason it seemed like in world series and it looks offensively i think when you look when you look at the cubs lineup you had a big issue at second base obviously hayward is a very streaky hitter he's either on or he's off you don't really get in between there was a point where he went like 30 at bats without a hit which was pretty tough and then when you looked at the lineup it was like six through nine for the cubs lineup it was almost a guaranteed out so when you add another bat like labor torres who can just take off some of the pressure of a Baez or a bryant Contreras and rizzo you're looking like a really strong lineup look what happens when castellanos joined they were able to just put the ball in play they were able to see better pitches because now there's another bat in the lineup that pitchers have to worry about adding torres there would be that guy so i hope you guys enjoyed this it was just a one-off season just to see if the cubs would have been better if glaber torres joined them and then when you think about the future he's gonna get that playing time he's gonna get better and it just would have been interesting to see also the cubs had eloy jimenez and they traded away for jose quintana and they also traded dylan cease at that point so that's a starting pitcher and an outfielder that could have been key to the key to this lineup. So who knows? I think the Cubs in hindsight have made some iffy trades, but you know, they won a world series because of this one. So I can't be too upset. So with that being said, the Cubs did win a world series in this sim with Glaber Torres. Do you think this was a good or a bad move for the Cubs? Do you think it was necessary to win the world series? Do you think Glaber Torres would be the same player if he was still with the Cubs? Who knows? I want to hear you guys' insight in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.